Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to study and know more about you. Send your spirit upon us and fill us with your wisdom and blessings. Grant us the courage to follow your way so that through the gifts and talents you have given us, we may do everything for your glory. Amen. Dear friends, in chapter 2, we will be learning on signs and symbols from our text, Church, the Worshipping Community. In the first chapter, we saw that worship of God is as old as the history of mankind itself. Our great saint and the father of the church, St. Augustine, taught us that we created in the image and likeness of God have an innate God orientation and our soul will not be at rest unless and until we merge with our Creator, God our Father. Moving on, this lesson is all about signs and symbols. We analyze signs in general as well as signs and symbols used in our worship of God, our liturgy. We all know that signs have much importance in our day-to-day -day lives. Why? Because we are in constant contact with many realities that are beyond our sensory perceptions. Meaning, we are not able to see, hear, feel or taste many of these realities. Here, signs and symbols act as the medium by which we understand these realities in a more concrete way. Abstract ideas like love, friendship, happiness, grief, charity, greed, etc. have more meaning when we, use, when we see concrete gestures like embracing, clapping and dancing, showing concern by giving generously, etc. What is a sign? It is an indicator. It can be expressed through words, actions, objects, arts, etc. There are two types of signs, natural and acquired or assumed. Natural signs have direct relation with the referred reality. Example, fire. Fire is a reality and smoke emanating from it is a sign. Assumed signs are attributed by man out of assumptions. The best example for an assumed sign is the national flag. Now, what is the difference between a sign and a symbol? A sign is an indicator, as we said, and it is also a marker for something very specific. A symbol can convey a deeper and more complex meaning and it is open to interpretation. Let us take, for example, the, the national flag itself. It has deeper symbolic meaning, like the top saffron color of our national flag indicate strength and courage. White middle band along with the Dharma Chakra indicate peace and truth and the green shows fertility, growth, and auspiciousness of the land. We all love traveling. While traveling, though we have Google Maps and other more advanced assistance systems nowadays, if you look outside, we will be able to find interesting signs all along the road, like a sign for left turn, a sign for right turn, parking, name wards, speed limits, hospitals, schools, zebra crossing, etc. If you look more closely, you can find milestones with yellow, orange and black and green toppings to indicate national, rural, city and state highways respectively. In digital world as well, especially in the social media, there are certain other symbols like emoji or image characters to express ourselves better emotionally. 
When we look at the Old Testament in the life of the Israelites, we see numerous occasions in which God intervenes in their life through signs and symbols. Let us see this video to illustrate an incident in the life of the Israelites. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. If you take this instance which we saw in the video from the book of Numbers chapter 21, 5 to 9, where the Israelites after a long time of slavery is saved and during their journey to the promised land, they speak against God and Moses. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents into their midst and many died. But soon the Israelites realized their mistake and begged Moses to intercede for them and pray to the Lord to take away the serpents. Moses presented before Yahweh the plight of his people and the Lord relenting commanded Moses to make a bronze serpent and set it on a pole and everyone bitten by the snake shall look at it and live. In the life of the early Christians as well, we can see a number of Christograms used as signs and symbols. The oldest of the Christograms is made up of the first two letters of Christ, Christos in Greek, Chi and Rho. The letters are often overlaid on top of each other. IHS. These letters are the shortened form of the Greek spelling of Jesus. INRI. These letters were inscribed on the sign that hung over Jesus when he was crucified. It is short form of the Latin phrase Iusus Nazarenius Rex Loderum, meaning Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Fish. Fish was a sign of the Christian faith for early Christians, for those who were meeting in secret for fear of Roman persecution. The Greek word for fish is ichthus, which is also an acronym, Iesus Christos Theos Soter. This means Jesus Christ, Son of God and Savior. The fish also reminds us of the miracle of the five loaves and two fishes and how Jesus called his disciples to be fishes of men. Sacred Heart The heart is a symbol of, of love. In Catholic art, the Sacred Heart is usually depicted as a flaming heart. It is also usually shining with divine light, pierced and encircled by a crown of thorns surmounted by a cross and it is shown to be bleeding. The Sacred Heart, pierced and wrapped in thorns, shows the depth of Jesus' love. It indicates that he was prepared to suffer and die for all people and that his love is eternal. Closer home, the Syro Malabar Cross, or the Nasrani Cross as we call it, is loaded with meaningful symbolisms that represent our tradition. At the top of the cross is a descending dove, representing the Holy Spirit of God coming down to live in our hearts, enabling us to live a righteous and faithful life. The symbolism of the buds is new life. The resurrection of Jesus Christ and by extension, the new spiritual life we can all claim because of Christ's sacrifice. The four main buds at the arm ends correspond to the four evangelists. 
The eight curled leaves at the arm ends represent regeneration. These four plus eight ext extremities together correspond to the twelve apostles of Jesus. At the very bottom are the steps of Calvary, representing faith based upon hope and love. The symbols of the four Gospels in Ezekiel chapter 1, 1 to 21, and Revelations chapter 4, 6 to 8 show St. Matthew's Gospel as the winged divine man, indicating the incarnation of Jesus as man. St. Mark's Gospel as the winged lion, indicating the leadership of Jesus. St. Luke's Gospel as the winged ox, indicating the sacrificial nature of Jesus. St. John's Gospel as the rising eagle, indicating the spirit hovering over the church and our journey towards God. Now, why are we discussing signs and symbols? What is the relevance of learning signs and symbols in our catechism class? The fact of the matter is that our liturgy is loaded with signs and symbols. Worship of God is an attempt to meet and experience God. And signs and symbols help us in our attempt at experiencing the invisible God. The bronze serpent in the Old Testament was a sign of salvation which was consummated in Jesus and realized on Calvary. The sacraments are the efficacious visible sign of the invisible God. Holy Kurbana is the sacrament of sacraments. Why do we have such a long liturgy is an oft asked question in common forums. The lion's share of our boredom or lethargy is caused because of our ignorance about these divine practices fixed and formulated by our Mother Church under the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit and with the authority granted by Jesus. When we come for our worship of God, we are invited to come with an open heart so that when we participate in the liturgy, we can participate in it in a way our Mother Church desires us to participate in it. Namely, our Mother Church desires that the liturgical text and the signs and symbols used in the liturgy continually open our hearts and invite us to have a dialogue or communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the light of the discussion we had today, and before delving into the deeper meanings of our liturgical signs and symbols, let us as an activity observe and note down the various signs and symbols used in our liturgy. Let us glorify and thank our Lord Jesus Christ for inspiring us throughout this session. Mother Mary, our Divine Mother, continue to intercede for us, your little children. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.